2021, there's a lot of taboos in sport or uh, what do you call unsportsmanlike conduct. We saw that with the Atlanta Braves fans in recent weeks, kind of uh, doing a revised uh, style to chop and chant. The Houston uh, cheating scandal is not going away. Uh, lying about COVID uh, vaccinations in the NFL, the NHL. But a big thing that a lot of people still don't want to face, it's the don't ask, <coughs> don't tell attitude uh, amongst uh, major league players about homosexuality. Now, when I was growing up in the 1970s, I was made aware there were two major league players that were gay. One was out and one wasn't. Now, the one that wasn't out, he's now passed away. He's a former member of the Capitals in the late 1970s. I'm not going to out him without, obviously, their permission, but if you research it online, you'll find out his uh, family member uh, mentioned that, and uh, as part of a uh, uh, Quebec documentary a few years ago, that's for you to research. But the one that we're going to talk about, I think it was groundbreaking, and a very good player, very underrated, kind of like uh, uh, poor man's Tim Raines. Glenn Burke, when he made it to the LA Dodgers, everybody thought, hey, this guy is going to go places. His uh, Scouts compared him to Willie Mays, not for power, but for speed, for uh, <coughs> playing the outfield. Now, Glenn Lawrence Bork, uh, born November 16, 1952, in San Leonardo, California, um, played for the Dodgers and the Oakland A's from 76 to 79. Now, he was the first major league player to come out as gay to his teammates and team owners during his pro career, and the first to publicly acknowledge it. After he retired, he had a major article in a great publication called Inside Sports. If you can find the uh, the uh, print copies of that edition, it's quite an interesting article. Uh, Inside Sports was sort of like the uh, 60 Minutes meets uh, Sports Illustrated of the, uh, what do you call, the elite press for sports uh, back in the day. Now, he, when he publicly acknowledged it, he said they can't ever say now that a gay man can't play in the majors because I'm a gay man and I made it. I saw him play uh, tons of skills. Uh, like I said, comparable to a poor man's Tim Raines, if he would have been developed under the right system, I think he would have been a regular outfielder, one of those, you know, five home runs, 50 RBIs, 50 stolen bases, you know, great, uh, you know, outfield assists. Now, He's also significant for, for a second thing. In October 1977, he ran onto the field to congratulate his Dodgers teammate Dusty Baker Jr., uh, the, the head coach of the Astros of the recent World Series, after Baker hit his 30 home run. Burke raised his hand over his head and Baker slapped it. This is widely considered with the uh, the first ever high five. So Burke and Baker invented it. Now Burke kept uh, kept active in sports after retiring from baseball. He competed in the '82 Gay Olympics, now renamed the Gay Games. In track and field uh, and in basketball, he excelled, and uh, he also played for many years in the elite San Francisco Gay Softball League. Now, unfortunately, he died from AIDS-related causes in the third wave of the AIDS crisis in 1995. In August 2013, Burke was among the first class of inductees in the National Gay and Lesbian Sports Hall of Fame. Now, he was also inducted in the Baseball Recularary Shrine of the, Eter Shrine of the Eternals in 2015. Now, like I said, Burke was an accomplished high school basketball star, leading the Berkeley High School California Yellow Jackets to an undefeated season and a 1970 Dorton California Championships. Burke could also dunk a basketball with both hands, a rare feat for anyone under six feet tall. He was voted onto the all-tournament team at the Tournament of Champions, which is called the TOC, and received the Northern California MVP award. He was also named Northern California's High School Basketball Player of the Year in 1970. Now, Burke was eventually awarded a scholarship to the University of Denver that same year, but after a few months there, he returned home to Oakland. He then enrolled in Merritt College and played on his basketball team. The Dodgers also recruited Burke to start playing in his minor league system in 1971. Now, toward the beginning of his career, an assistant coach again described him as the next Willie Mays. Burke was a highly scouted star in the Dodgers minor league system before being called up to the big club. 
Now, as a gay man, Burke's association with the Dodgers was difficult. According to his 1995 autobiography, Out at Home, Dodger GM Al Campanis offered to pay for a lavish honeymoon if Burke agreed to marry. Burke refused to do so and is said to have responded to a woman. He also angered a Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda by befriending the manager's gay son, Tommy Lasorda Jr. Lasorda has disputed that, but he says he doesn't understand Burke's behavior at the time. Why wouldn't he come out? Why keep that inside? Glenn had a lot of talent. He could have been an outstanding basketball or baseball player. He sure was good in the clubhouse. What happened? I don't know what happened. He just wasn't happy here? The Dodgers eventually traded Burke to the Athletics for Billy North, claiming that he needed an experienced player who could contribute right away. North did have more experience and better stats, but some would argue that he was less talented and there have been suggestions that homophobia was behind the trade. The, the deal was also unpopular with Dodgers players. The day after the trade was announced, teammate Davey Lopes said he was the life of the team, on the buses, in the clubhouse, everywhere. In Oakland, Burke received little playing time in the 78 and 79 seasons. Some teammates avoided showering with Burke, and uh, unfortunately he also suffered a knee injury that year. Now, uh, before the 1980 season uh, began, uh, the, uh, the uh, injury was getting chronic, and the Athletics eventually sent him to the minors in Utah, and then released him from his contract before the season ended. In four years and 225 games in the majors, he had 523 at-bats, batted 237 with two homers, 38 RBIs, and 35 stolen bases. Now, Burke said uh, in public published reports, by 78, I think everybody knew, and most of us we knew, uh, but, uh, you know, none of our business. And he was sure his teammates didn't care. Former Dodgers uh, Captain Lopes said no one cared about his lifestyle. Burke told the New York Times that prejudice drove me out of baseball sooner than I should have, but it wasn't changing. He wrote in his autobiography that prejudice just won out. Burke left professional sports at the age of 27 and eventually told People magazine in 1994 that his mission as a gay ball player was to break a stereotype, and he thought it worked. Now, getting back to the high five. On October 2nd, 77, right before the World Series, Burke ran out to the field to congratulate his Dodger teammate Baker after he hit his 30th home run in the last game of the season. Burke raised his hand over his head as Baker jogged home from third base. Not knowing what to do about the upper his hand, Baker slapped it. They have been credited for inventing the high five, although accidentally, and then detailed the ESPN 30 for 30 film, The High Five, directed by Michael Jacobs. The high five now is, uh, is widely used. Now, after retiring from baseball, Burke used the high five with other LGBTQ residents of the Castro District of San Francisco, where he became a symbol of gay pride and identification. Now, life after Major League Baseball, he continued his athletic endeavors and won medals in 100 and 200 meter sprints at the first gay games in 1982 and competed in the 86 gay games in basketball. His jersey number at Berkeley again has been retired in his honor. He also played for many years in the San Francisco Gay Softball League, playing third base, base for the legendary Uncle Burke's Bombers. Now, talking about the Inside Sports article in 82, it made Burke's homosexuality public knowledge. Although he remained active in am amateur sport, Burke turned to drugs to fill the void in his life when his career ended. An addiction to cocaine destroyed him both physically and financially, and in 87, his leg and foot were crushed when he was hit by a car in San Francisco. After the accident, his life went to a physical and financial decline. He was arrested in jail for drugs and lived on the streets of San Francisco for a number of years, often in the same neighborhood that once embraced him. He spent his final months with his sister in Oakland. He died May 30, 95 of AIDS at Fairmont Hospital in San Leonardo, California, at the young age of 42. He has since been buried in Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland. Now, when news of his battle with AIDS became public in 94, the Oakland AIDS organization helped to support him financially. In interviews given while he was fighting AIDS, he expressed little in the way of grudges and only one big regret. They, they never had the opportunity to pursue a second professional sports career in basketball. Now, in 1999, Major League Baseball player Bill Bean revealed, revealed his homosexuality, only the second Major League player to do so. Unlike Burke, who came out to teammates while he was still an active player, uh, Bean re revealed himself four years after his retirement in 95, the year Burke died. Now, again, 
2013 induction in the National Gay and Lesbian Sports Hall of Fame. Now, in July 2014, Major League, uh, League Baseball announced plans to honor Burke at that year's World Series, uh, Al Sarah Gabe, doing so as part of a pregame press conference on July 15, 2014. Now, uh, in 2015, the A's honored Burke as part of Athletics Pride Night. Burke's brother Sidney threw a ceremony for his pitch of the game. On June 4, 2021, the Athletics renamed their annual Pride Night in Burke's honor with the first recushioned Glenn Burke Pride Night to be held a week later on June 11th. And again, inducted into baseball, reliquary shine of the Shrine of the Charles in 2015. Now, what I liked about Burke, uh, the uh, the uh, the overall uh, play that he showed, uh, he was not somebody that wasn't uncommon in baseball at the time. There was a lot of uh, two sport players that were in that uh, number four, number five hole for uh, for the outfield. But I always wonder if he would have played with Montreal or Toronto in the 1970s. Now, uh, six feet uh, one uh, one ninety five. Now. <coughs> just looking at uh, just looking at some rough stats because it's interesting to, to look at stats in the 1977 season okay 254 13 stolen bases uh, 13 RBIs 43 hits and 169 at bats now uh, the uh, uh, 78 season where he split between uh, LA uh, LA and Oakland uh, he had uh, his numbers for uh, for Oakland were, were not too bad 15 stolen bases one homer 14 RBIs uh, 47 hits and 200 at bats 235 but I think what really uh, summed up a lot of people he was caught stealing quite often now we've adjusted his, uh, his uh, style of uh, base pads but what like I said what really stands out in 19 uh, uh, 77 uh, season, where you know he really was a he was a cog in the Dodgers' speed that year. Uh, again, uh, 254, 13 stolen bases, uh, 13 RBIs. Didn't walk very often, uh, and you know he would score key runs as well, especially late in situations. But his outfield work was was quite impressive. Very very speedy and. Uh, you know, Devon White comes in mind uh, because uh, uh, Devon White was always struggling at a first, first part of his career before he, he established his better pace later on. Glenn Burke, uh, if he would have played in Montreal and Toronto, I think he would have he would have been a star. It would uh, you know uh, you know ten home runs, forty five RBIs, thirty five stolen bases, hit two fifty, good number eight or number nine hitter. Because not everybody in the outfield needs to hit forty home runs, ladies and gentlemen. You need a good defensive outfielder to compensate for the two. Uh, you know, in the uh, in the uh, the field, I can't uh, can't catch a ball. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of the great Glenn Burke. If you like what we're doing here with our vintage podcast on Major League Baseball, let us know with a like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day. Bye.